came in when? 54. Okay. I was 14 marks of 2013. And uh, it was revealed to me that I have um, non-small cell adenocarcinoma lung cancer. And I was at stage 3B of that disease. Ah, uh, I'll, I'll take this in a couple of different directions if you don't mind. Professionally as a soldier, I've been a soldier for 33 years of my life. And uh, as a soldier, it, it made me stop and think about uh, the, reality, the reality that my career was about to come to an end. It was about to come to an end that I had not anticipated. Um, I hadn't planned for this type of ending uh, to my career. I love being a soldier uh, more than most things. My family, God, and the Army. <laughs> uh, professionally speaking, it was a tough blow to know that After all these years of uh, serving in the military, this is the type of ending that I would face. Um, I wasn't allowed to dwell on it very long, of course, because um, when you look at the, the dark side of things too long, then you tend to lose perspective. And so just can't, we're not, we don't do well when we lose perspective. We have to maintain operational awareness at all times or situational awareness at all times. So soon after that came uh, my spiritual awareness, or shall I say my spiritual awakening, how I was gonna deal with it inside. Uh, after sitting down with my wife and looking at her and trying to really understand if she was strong enough, uh, because that was my main concern making sure that my partner was ready to take on this fight. That took a little while. As a matter of fact, I just totally stopped thinking about me and stopped thinking about where she was. And to see her um, vulnerable in that, in that sense gave my spirit another reason to stay high, to stay up where it had always been. So, uh, spiritually, I, I don't know, I got a second wind from somewhere. I just said, hey, uh, my wife and family and those that know me will never have to uh, see me endure a down day. I would, I would stay uplifted. Physically, it was a different, totally different story. When they go inside of you and they take a part of you, specifically the lung, and take away something from your body, it's it's uh it feels weird for one. You know, you're walking around with less less of yourself. And then two, it feels like you're fighting against your your body is fighting against you because you you're really supposed to sit down and heal and mend, but 33 years as a soldier wouldn't allow me to do that. I couldn't against everybody's best judgment and wishes and, by, and advice. I felt like I had to keep pushing. So I eventually gave in to the physical demands of what cancer was doing to me. And I faced some of the toughest moments, and I still do, in my life ever, ever. I've been an athlete my whole life, ever since I can remember being a baby. <laughs> Running around with my dad, trying to grab his leg and bring him down as a wrestler, or chasing him around. 
for basketball, I've been an athlete. I, I was just telling my son coming in here, my, my 12 year old son, how important it is. He was telling me about how he and another kid, they ran the most laps in, in gym today. I said, well, you know, that's what being an athlete is about. You have to have a strong heart. You gotta be willing to go that extra, you know, and your dad was, you know, I was telling him how I was always willing to do that. <sighs> to have that taken from you, it's, it's kind of like, you know, you just lose a, a, a sense of who you are. Now, mind you, <laughs> a lot of these, uh, how should I say, acceptance moments happen to everybody with cancer. So I didn't, I never thought for once that I was special, that I was something that was going on with me that wasn't going on with other cancer patients. I'm not sure, but the, the immediate responses that I got, because I didn't really, I kept it to a, a small circle of friend, family and friends who I, who I made aware of it. And I think for the most part, most of them knowing me, who I who I am, they just said, "Hey, be strong. And if you need anything, let us know." And, you know, it was a lot of uh, outpouring of concern at first, but you know, I think it was important for me early on to know to let everyone know, "Hey, I got this. I'm gonna fight it. I'm not, you know, I'm gonna deal with it." And then as time went on, it was important that they see me strong. They see me still representing the that they knew the brother that they knew the soldier that they knew the dad that they knew uh, the husband that my wife knows to, to be strong of course there were moments you know like at home after a day long day's work when it just wasn't possible I'm just like I mean I'm laid out there's nothing I can do about it and I, I still have those moments but I think it brought people to another understanding of who I was because before that I was always the one they came to as a symbol of strength or to get advice or uh, hey can you help me out with this you know I want to improve on this this uh, my, my uh, bench press so I want to be able to do this you know because I had uh, fashioned myself as a personal trainer of sorts for about 17 years with, um, without the official title, but uh, yeah, it was important for me to maintain that, and then um, I would say a lot, from what I see now, a lot of people are still in disbelief that I am a cancer survivor, that I do uh, still fight this disease every day, and I would say that's, you know, you know thanks to the good Lord above, just making me an example of what he can do, you know, with the faith, you know. Uh, because I don't think it's because of anything I've done. Well, I don't, I can't say who should get the credit, but the good Lord above, you know, you get cancer, you get a, a diagnosis of cancer at stage 3B, and the first day you see the oncologist, he said, I'll give you 18 months. He's never cured it. I'm already at 24 months, you know, right now. So, I, I, the impression I want to leave on people is that there is a God, He's there, and when you believe Him, this is what He can do. Oh. First and foremost, Jesus Christ. And I don't hesitate to know that. The power of prayer, I've always believed in it since I was a little June bug. Uh, there's a saying, praises go up, blessings come down. And I have a lot to praise him for. I, I do. In my, in my whole, throughout my whole military career, I've garnered one prayer. 
I've asked the Lord to take care of my family. I would do whatever. I would run. I think it's because I spent so much time away from him as a soldier. And I couldn't always be there. You know, my spouse had to be standing in the gap. My sons were constantly facing things that on their own that I should have been there for them. That easily could have taken them out. You look around today, you see uh, the calamity, the, the pressures that young men face all the time. And that's in Chicago. And that's it's, it's probably ten times what you see on television that goes unreported. But, you know, true to his word, God has delivered my sons through that. I mean, I have nothing but praise for that. So, I say that to say that my biggest supporter is, yes, it, it starts with him. And I truly believe that he's placed me in the right situations at the right time and brought me to the right people, i.e. my oncologist is a great guy, uh, the hospitals and all the specialty care that I received and most most of all the the, the clinical intervention that went into uh, just curbing this disease and keeping it from taking me out. And then you have to look at the overall support for me and my family that I received from Gilda's Club, that was amazing. I mean, the day I met Aaron at uh, during an, uh, one of my oncology visits was the day that changed my whole life. It was, at that time, I just thought I was, hey, I was another soldier just going through it. And <clears throat> I was going to soldier on. And I, you know, I really thought I was there to inspire everybody else in the room that had, you know, everybody had a needle in their arm getting their chemo and it was, it was such a, an amazing day that day, and in came Erin, and she told me about Gilda's Club, and I said, wow. And I, and I had just thought about something like that for my family, not so much for me, but for my family. And we came here, and it's been, oh, wow. It's been like having another family, exactly. So uh, the support right here in this community has been amazing. And then, of course, my Army family has been amazing. I, I work for, I happen to work for the 1st Army Command Surgeon. He is, my boss is actually a, a doctor and a deputy. Uh, he's a retired veteran. And uh, the, the support that they give me is, is overwhelming. It's, it's, it's just amazing. Um, my family, of course, is always there. They're just my kids. Uh, they never can give me enough hugs and checking on daddy. You all right, daddy? You all right? And my wife and she's finally, you know, understanding. You know that hey, you know, a, a bad day is a bad day. You know, but it's worse if I don't have a good hug from her. You know, it's gonna be even worse. So I, I'd say I've been set. I couldn't ask for any more. I mean, the professionals, the clinical folks, they've done what I've needed. You know, the community, Gilda's Club, the, the church, you know, we have an amazing church, uh, Temple Baptist Church. Uh, our church family has been amazing. Uh, I've been blessed, you know. I, I tell the group off and downstairs, I say, I, it's, it's been a blessing for me. I mean, I, I haven't, not once thought about sitting in the corner and crying and saying, why me? I don't think I've once asked, why me? Mm -hmm. Future is in time or is in... Hmm. My son and I were just talking about that on the way over here. When I... A couple years ago, well, it was right after, maybe about a month after my diagnosis. And we hadn't quite, we hadn't broke the news to our kids yet. And my wife and I, we were really debating on how we were going to just put the word out there. Well, somehow my son, as observer, he knew something was going on. But dad just wasn't quite dad. And and hadn't even mentioned the word. And 
I picked him up from school. Uh, it was right after one of my treatment days. So I wasn't the best, but I had to get them from school so, the wife, so my wife wouldn't have to take off work. So I soldiered on. I was just hanging on to the steering wheel, just barely making it. And I was, my, my intent was to send him on in the house and I'd stay out in the air and recover and then walk back in straight so he wouldn't suspect anything. Well, on this particular day, he got in the car, and uh, before I could pull off, he just put his hand on my leg. He said, Dad, don't worry, you're not going anywhere. And right then and there, I felt reassured of whatever future that I might have was was set meaning I'm not going to look way way out there you know, unrealistically but the future looks bright every day that I can wake up and I can be surrounded by my family uh, my immediate future is to retire from the army I'm going to be doing that shortly because uh, the demands of the demands of taking care of yourself with cancer and then trying to work at the same time they, they, it, it just it just got to be too much it's, it's at the point now where I can't do both so I have to just pull back and take care of me in doing so I would like to think in my mind that I am prolonging the inevitable. Um, when I think about the future, I think about my son winning the Masters one day. In fact, I told him that the other day we were watching the golf. I said, you're going to win this tournament one day. I, I see my daughter. She wants to be a DJ. She's becoming a DJ. My wife being at the top of her career field, I, I, I do plan on seeing all of this, being there when all this is realized. Uh, a future where I can serve as an, a witness or an example for others with cancer that they can they too can believe and have the faith that cancer does not control your life it doesn't rule your life that your faith can carry you through um, I I do believe that we're here for a purpose. Now, if I've served my purpose, then the Lord lets me know that, then, I, then it's time for me to move on. But something tells me I haven't fully served my purpose yet. And I believe that I will get a chance to do that. 33 years in the Army may not have been my purpose, but maybe it was a good lead in or a good practice round for what he truly wants me to do and this just is a way to prepare me 